Alright guys, so a little while back, and you can find a like more fleshed out video of this on my uh, Vlair channel, and uh, that is my thought, my ideas for um, for a new Phantom of the Opera movie. You know, I just thought it'd be a fun idea since we're, you know, we're, they're bringing back the Universal Monster movies and making them like legit horror movies. I kind of figured it'd be a neat idea to essentially you know, give out, like, uh, do, like, these ideas here and there of, um, like, these ideas, and you've seen a few of them before, and the first one I did was on my Vlair channel, and that one was of the fan of the opera, which, again, is a, cons I think he, him and the, him and the hunchback are considered, like, the, f were technically the first two of the Universal Monsters, and, which is funny because they're both played by the same actor, and they're usually forgotten. I think it's because they're they're uh, silent, you know. They're um, they're both like si you know they're both silent films, and I think that's why we forget them. But um, yeah, I figured it'd be kind of fun. I didn't do one on the Hunchback because there was really nothing I can really think of that I don't know if I could have like a say in how would, the Hunchback of Notre Dame could really fit into the new continu this new continuity of Universal Monsters. Or, if there is a continuity, because I don't think there is, but uh, there's really nothing I can think of that I could do that wouldn't be so different for Hunchback. That's why I didn't do one for Hunchback. But I wanted to do something cool with the Phantom of the Opera. Because I think, like, everyone just remembers the mu like everyone remembers the musical. No one remembers that the original novel was, like, a horror romance kind of story. So, I thought it'd be kind of cool to do this and give my own take on it and talk about it, so yeah. So, my idea for a new Phantom of the Opera is one of two ideas. So the first idea is, um, kind of make it like a per go back to making it a period piece, you know, and really bring, you know, really play up the not so much singing, because this wouldn't be... A, neither of these would be a musical. But I would like to do, like, make it more like a period piece slasher movie. Where Eric, the Phantom, is kind of like the monster in the shadows, just kind of silently and obsessively stalking Christine. Um, I would have... I wouldn't say, like, a higher body count. I'd like to do this more as, like, very tense, very... Almost like... Halloween in, in a, as a period piece. I'd love to do that and really play up the whole, like, um, manipulating the other uh, theater, you know. I'd really like to have it like a period piece mysterio, like Eric being this um, period piece like Mysterio character. I think that'd be a lot of fun to do. Um, so that's the uh, so that was the first idea. The other idea is a little different. It's a little out there, and this one would be a modern film. And that is, in this story... Um, uh, in this story, in this, in this story idea, this is the one I was more, like, fleshed out with. And in this one, I, what I would do is have it set in the theater. You know, the theater that had the chandelier crash and it's foreclosed, it's dilapidated. Um, and I would have it set in the modern day and these, uh, this camera group goes in there because there's always been, like, tall, I would have it that what happened in that theater was a real thing, but no one knows if the Phantom was real or not. No one really, you know, the Phantom is kind of treated like an urban legend in Paris. And, um, this group from America made a, fr like, I would have French and American, um, family members, not family members, um, crew members put together, and they go into the house to, like, investigate it, because there's been, like, people who own the building are saying, like, oh, there's strange whispers going on, there's, like, you know, stuff, you know, cold spots and stuff, so maybe it's haunted by the actual, by an actual phantom now. So, while there was, yes, there was a, I would have it in this movie that, yes, there was a tragedy that struck that theater when the chandelier crashed onto the t thing, killed a few people, and there were a few unexplained deaths. But there was never real any real confirmation that there was a real Phantom of the Opera. But now there's these ghost sightings, and this crew goes in to check it out. You know, to be like, oh, maybe it is the real Phantom. There is a real Phantom of the Opera now. Um, and while they are, they're in there, they are being attacked constantly by this figure, who I would really keep up in the air that 
it, I would keep it up in the air because people would be like, "Well, there's no way if he the Phantom was real, you know, he'd be he'd be long dead by now. He would be very much long long dead from you know just old age alone." But I would even have it like maybe it's somebody new or maybe it's the ghost of Eric. Like no one knows. Like I really want to. I'd really love to play up. This is where I'd really put the Phantom in the Phantom of the Opera, where I would really play up the angle of. We don't know what he is. We don't know what's causing this. We don't know if it's like Eric back from the like if it's Eric's spirit haunting the place or if it's like someone taking on the mantle and just hiding there. Like I'd really like to play up like they find like a, there's like illusions. They run into like old theatrical illusions and other times there's stuff that goes on that they just can't explain like like seeing like a figure like a figure's warm body on the on the on the thermal cam, and they look away. It's not there. Um, I'd really like to play up those kind, that kind of angle of really playing an ambiguous of what the hell is this? Like, what the hell are we dealing with? I would even like to have like one of the people that's in this crew is a descendant of Christine Daae. I would really like to play up that this this young girl is like a descendant of her, and like. Her family, like her family lineage, has always been like, oh, we're connect- we're forever connected to the to this theater, but we've never, you know, we've never really gotten away from it. And even because obviously Daae would be like long dead and probably be her great grandmother, um, so or even older than that, because this was the eighteen, I think this was the eighteen hundred eight seventeen or eighteen hundreds, or even older than that, that this book was written. But yeah, it would be like yeah, our the Daae family has always been like, this has hung over us like a noose. Like, this whole theater has hung over with us like a noose, and I'm here, and the woman's here to be like, I'm here just to end this, close this chapter, because even, you know, even we don't know our whole family history. There's people out there, I know people are like, oh, I know all about my family history. And guess what? Myself included, I don't know jack shit about half the shit that went on in my family. So, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there who have, like, some... A family tree, tree, but some of the roots are covered in darkness to play a little theatrical here. So that's why I'd really play, like, even they don't know that if they're, like, even the Daae family never knew if there was a real phantom or not. That's what I'd really like to play with in this story, is like, what did, you know, what if there was no phantom? What if it was just a bunch of uh, happenstances and, you know, a bunch of stuff that occurred that was like maybe you could just explain it away or maybe there was someone there what really was a person maybe there was a real person or maybe it was just you know unfortunate accidents that just happened you know random amount you know a a great amount of of uh, unfortunate accidents but hey like i would even have this explanation of hey there wasn't a lot of safety precautions back then you know and these things did happen a lot in not just that theater but also theaters across the world you know, there wasn't a lot of safety regulations. So that would be, like, one angle to really play with. But then go back to the whole, like, maybe it's maybe the Phantom is supernatural. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's someone h- human who's not Eric, mind you, who's not Eric. But someone who's, like, taken on that mantle. Who has taken on, like, that persona. Like, who was obsessed with the story and became obsessed with it. And that's a, But again, I wouldn't fully reveal it. That's the thing, is, like, I would never... And I know, like, oh, that seems like a cop-out to really make it like, oh, you're not going to show if the Phantom's real or not? Yeah. I think, out of all the Universal Monsters, the Phantom is the best one to play with that angle. You'd want to see Dracula. You'd want to see Frankenstein. Even though in my version, my idea for it would be from the villager's perspective, like I talked about a few um, a few videos ago. Like, I, like, that would be the thing, is, like, the Frankenstein I would do is, like, do it from the villager's perspective, and you'd treat Frankenstein's monster like the mo- like a, like the shark in Jaws. Um, but here, like, this is the one, if you were really, realistically, go- if a movie studio was going to do, like, okay, you're not going to see a lot of the Phantom, but when you see do see him, uh, you, ha- you question whether it's a real person or not. That out of all of those, it, the Phantom is the best character to do that with because the Phantom was treated like the character with a lot of mystery to him and a lot of like um, mystique to that character. So I'd really like to bring that back. And again, this would not be a fucking musical. This would be like a straight up. This is a this is a terrifying story, and it's just gonna hook into you. 
and not let the fuck go. So that's something I really like to, you know, really play with in this story. Um, yeah, like I, as for like who I could see direct this movie, like I said in my previous video on Vlair, uh, Adam Wingard would be my pick. He's, he directed, um, a few shorts in VHS. Um, uh, sorry, my brain just sh shorted out for a sec. Um, but yeah, Adam Wingard, most of you guys know best, he is going to be the director of Godzilla vs. Kong, but he also did a very popular horror movie called You're Next. He also did, did do that Blair Witch movie from 2016, which was not... Oh, which was... Eh. But the reason why I want Adam Wing, I think Adam Wingard would be the best pick for a Phantom of the Opera movie is because... Um, the reason why is I think he does really good enclosed haunted house kind of films. Like, say what you want about Blair Witch, but I really like that final scene in the witch, in the, uh, famous house from the Blair Witch. And Your Next is a very tight, enclosed home invasion kind of film. So could you imagine what he could, what Wingard could do in a tight, enclosed, like, dilapidated theater? I think he'd be perfect for the job. As for the Phantom... Um, I'd like to have the Phantom speak. I would love to have the Phantom speak, and my my choice for the Phantom would be Adam uh, Andy Circus. I think Andy Circus would be an interesting Phantom. I don't want to be an attractive Phantom, and I think he would do really cool with the prosthetic effects on the side of his face. I'd really like to play with. Them. I'd really like to have like a kind of like dirty, kind of grimy, because that's what he was in the book. Is this very like ugly and very like psychotic character? And I think he, I think um, Circus would really play and knock it out of the park. But anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below. What do you guys think of these ideas for a new fan of the opera movie? Do you guys like them? Do you guys hate them? Uh, and how would you? What would you do with the Phantom of the Opera? Just comment below. Let me know. And once again, hope you all enjoyed this.